The 14th G20 Summit taking place uh, here in Osaka, Japan on June 28th and 29th has now come to an end. And the G20 leaders have produced a summit of broad, substantial success. Uh, the big highlight was their achievements on the uh, the contentious issue of international um, trade, where they uh, launched Prime Minister uh, Abe's, the host's, initiative for a uh, Osaka track of data free flow with trust. In doing so, they gave the needed highest level political uh, push to the slow uh, ongoing negotiations for electronic commerce at the WTO, but said they would take action in other forum uh, to make a new regime for digital trade come alive. It means not only uh, freeing trade in this sector, uh, which is the biggest one in um, the global economy uh, as we look towards uh, the near future, but also uh, requires trust, rules for cybersecurity, on espionage, on individual privacy, on theft of intellectual uh, property. And it's only uh, the leaders of countries that can bring together and uh, make the trade-offs between security on the one hand uh, and the economy through open trade on the other. They also committed uh, in their uh, declaration to strive to open trade and backed that um, a promise uh, with a commitment by President Xi of China at the leader's table to open the Chinese economy to all of his uh, G20 partners, to increase imports from them all, to provide a level playing field for their foreign investment with his domestic ones for all of the G20, and not just uh, a single one or two. And then when he sat down uh, with uh, President uh, Trump of the United States, um, they uh, put in place a trade truce, promising not to make things worse in their bilateral uh, dispute, and to relaunch uh, negotiations that credibly promised to make things slowly uh, better uh, between the big two. And they also uh, talked in their bilateral discussion about North Korea, about Taiwan, and about the treatment of Chinese students in the United States, proving that the G20 uh, is the place for effective global security governance on some of the toughest security issues in the world. North Korea nuclear proliferation and of course the territorial dispute over sovereignty of Taiwan. But it did show uh, that they recognized, both President Trump and President Xi, that they were bound together in a broader relationship and had common cause on preventing accidents from happening over Taiwan or accidents of a nuclear sort from North Korea and its nuclear uh, program. Beyond that, um, many other uh, advances, uh, new principles for quality infrastructure uh, investment. So the money uh, will last and really do development for the poor. On debt transparency uh, and sustainability, similar uh, promises uh, to ensure that uh, the poorest countries don't, through lack of knowledge, get in over their heads and go bankrupt and call for a bailout from those who uh, will not uh, come through. Advances to on international health, affirming the need to um, mobilize financing to bring universal health coverage to the developing countries as an essential cause of their overall um, development advances to on um, curbing the use of social media to um, radicalize individuals, to uh, recruit them, to finance them, to plan terrorist acts in the wake of the great uh, tragedy at Christchurch in New Zealand. 
uh, that these leaders uh, had witnessed um, a short time ago. An innovative event, uh, agenda on um, aging um, populations and um, some um, attention to um, gender issues in parts of the communique. The biggest, toughest issue, of course, was uh, climate change, controlling the uh, climate um, crisis. And here, uh, all of the uh, G7 uh, leaders um, said the right things, that they recognized there was an emergency, uh, that they needed to um, act. But then uh, the traditional divide uh, between one of the United States and the rest of the 19 uh, reappeared and prevented uh, the bold uh, action that the world really needs uh, to control climate change at the very same time uh, as people were dying from historically high uh, heat across Europe, in India, and uh, elsewhere. The good news, though, uh, is that uh, the Osaka summit was just the first of three. It's followed by the G7 summit in Biarritz, France, on August 24th to 26th, uh, where President Macron has put climate change front and center of the agenda uh, there. And then on to New York for the whole UN coming together at the summit level um, to some degree. For four summits peaking on September 23rd on financing for development, on uh, climate um, change, on um, universal um, health coverage, and uh, other uh, parts of the sustainable um, development uh, goals. So Osaka was the launch of many good things um, that could uh, happen and are more likely to uh, now that we can see uh, President Xi and um, President Trump pulling um, together uh, under the wise uh, consensus-oriented leadership of here in Osaka President Abe uh, of uh, Japan uh, and then soon uh, President Macron of France. Uh, will it be enough? Uh, we'll have to uh, wait uh, and see. But everyone can leave Osaka with confidence that we're on the uh, right track and we can get the job done.